Hello! Have you got your mobile devices ready? Because we've got another SIM release ready for mobiles. Now this is uh, the 0.56 version, which is essentially the same version I talked about on the desktop. Uh, if you want to check that release out in more details, here's a link to it. But I'll be talking about the specifics of what's changed for the mobile releases on this one. And it is exactly the same SIM uh, with a few little caveats, but the functionality and all the levels are exactly the same as it stands. And you've even got um, online interactivity between uh, desktop and mobile and whatever. So I'm going to start this out by talking about Android. I'm going to be running this tablet and I'm going to use this OTG cable with my Radio Master Zorro to show what's going on there. And I'm going to do screen recording on the device, which may make it drop a few frames, just to put that out there. Okay, and uh, here's the original level, and you, you should recognize this. This is uh, the first level you replace, and that's all good. Now, as I mentioned in the desktop release earlier, um, I did this fix on the shaders, and that's allowed me to make the city level better, basically. Beforehand, it was using the wrong color space, and this could make the buildings look a little bit dark and the entire level just a little bit wrong, really. That's now been corrected, and it's quite subtle, but you should hopefully find that, you know, the city level looks a bit nicer, it's lit a bit better, um, it all is generally better in itself. Now, let's talk about performance. The tablet I use to help with my development is this one. It's the Hawaii... Uh, MatePad Pro. I bought it because it was reasonably okay. Um, it's not as powerful as my four-year-old iPhone, but it does okay and it was quite cheap. Uh, although that took me a long time to get Google services back on it because it's Hawaii. Now, as I said, it performs okay and in the original level, we generally get 60 frames a second. On the city level, our frame rate sort of varies a bit and it's not normally this bad. It's being brought down by the screen recording, but normally it's around 50 something frames a second. It can drop down below 60. Uh, the screen recording is hitting it and it's getting into the 20 frames a second. Um, and that's a similar story if I was to go and look at the new level, which is the valley level. And the valley level is much more full of stuff. It has a lot more going on. It has a lot of trees. Um, it has a, a lot of geometry. Uh, we're getting sort of 30 something frames a second here. Without screen recording, normally I'd get 40 something. And this has been a problem always because what I found is when um, back on the desktop, if you say what resolutions do you support, the graphics card and the monitor would come up with a whole range of resolutions, a whole range of different uh, refresh rates, and then you could pick one. For example, my uh, Mac, my iMac monitor is 5K. I don't run it in 5K because the performance would degrade. 1080p, I get full frame rate no matter how much I turn on, that's absolutely fine. But with an Android device, and you ask it what the resolutions are, it just comes back with the native resolution. And on this particular tablet, it's 2560 by 1600. That is quite high resolution for a sort of small little thing. And the problem is, um, as tablets and phones become more advanced, the resolution increases, but we don't necessarily want to use all that resolution. Um, and I thought I was kind of stuck here, but then I found what uh, Android has is this internal frame buffer. So you don't have a resolution, but if you write at a constant uh, size to the frame buffer, then there's a piece of hardware that will scale that up on the screen. So using that, what I'm able to do is present you with sort of virtual resolutions. What I do is I take the native resolution of whatever we're running, and then I sort of do some calculations on there to work out, you know, what if we divide this by eight and I give you like each of the, the steps in that resolution, we can choose a different one. So if I go into system config now, uh, you see our graphics levels medium, that's default on, um, on this sort of device. If you've got something really good and fast, you can up that all the way if you like. But if I change this resolution down, and um, you'll notice if you keep like looking at the screen, as we change the resolution, nothing much happens. If I change it down all the way, you see everything becomes quite fuzzy. But if I just knock it down to like 1280 by 800, for example, and then go back and resume the sim, you will see there's not much of a de degradation in terms of what we can see. And what we've got now is our frame rate hitting 
close to that 60 frames a second, um, albeit take some frames off because I'm screen recording, um, but it goes a lot, lot better by that. One thing um, I needed to do in the mobile release was change the way the water worked. The water was really quite, quite posh in its design on desktop. Here it's a bit more basic, so if you crash in the water, it's not quite so exciting. You just kind of sink. There's none of the super duper underwater effects that there was before. So by doing this, it means you can get the frame rate you want to achieve and you could knock that down further and increase the graphical effects if you wanted to, depending on what you're running on. And the sort of ultimate test I did on that is I took this. This was my very small foray into Android phones. This is a Wiley Fox Swift, I think it was called. Yeah, this is the original one. It had two gigs of memory. It had very poor graphics performance. And I sometimes talk about, have a look at the performance for Android Slingshot on uh, on the benchmarks. And this scores a whopping 53. And to put it into perspective, the Android tablet I'm running scores 4,264. It's so much more powerful, but look at this. I'm gonna have to fill on the screen, but I can show you what it looks like in its native resolution. So I've uh, gone and started up and put myself in a position where we can sort of see some stuff. And the native resolution here is I think 1280 by 720. And that is running at four frames a second. If I try and take off, um, it's it's a slideshow essentially. So this is, is fairly unusable. It's very, well, it's lacking in all power and everything. And what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna change it to such an extent it's gonna look really nasty, but it's just to sort of illustrate what you can do. So I'm gonna change the graphic settings to very low as that down samples the textures even more. And I'm gonna change the resolution to the minimum. This is, it's not it's not quite the minimum, I could go one below that. I'm just trying to do this in my viewfinder, which is often dodgy, there we go. So that is nasty looking, because essentially we've just given it the resolution of a ZX Spectrum. However, look at our frame count. It's not, it's not great, but it's up to, uh, 32 frames a second, 20 frames a second. I mean, yeah, it is not perfect and it's ugly. However, I've gone from a complete slideshow to something I can actually fly around it. I mean, as I said, this is, this is an extreme example. I wouldn't recommend anybody does this because it's still absolutely nasty to look at. And you know, the frame rate's not going to be great all over. Um, yeah, we're still getting like, you know, 15 frames a second here. But it's still better than two. And we can actually fly something. But this is just to illustrate the changes uh, this sort of thing can make. The changes to that resolution settings equals something that's uh, very bad to better. However, if, if it's that bad to start with, like two frames a second, probably don't worry about it. Get a different phone because it's not... It's not going to improve that much. The graphical quality here, as we've got it, is just it's just nasty at this point. But there you go. That's that's my extreme example for you. Now, I don't suggest anybody runs it on something as bad as a phone like this. It's just to sort of demonstrate that if you shrink down the amount of rendering we're doing and allow the hardware to bring that up, we can get much more performance out of it. And generally speaking, you can knock that down to up to about half the resolution without starting to really notice a degradation in what you're seeing. And so you can really get the frame rate up there. So if you want to uh, turn on sort of ultra settings and have lots more shadows, knock that resolution down a bit more. The weather really does hammer uh, mobile devices. Uh, you can knock down everything and you can hopefully get what you want there. But I tend to think that your frame rate is the most important thing. Having that smooth 60 frames a second experience um, is what makes it or breaks it on this. So um, I was happy to be able to do something on Android to be able to uh, get a much better experience for you. So I hope that really helps you, uh, especially you guys that were struggling. And it kind of brings me on to where we are in terms of memory. And for this, let me turn to the iPhone and I will 
use touch controls on this. Now the reason I've got this hooked up via USB is because I'm on a Mac I can actually go straight into QuickTime and capture directly on my Mac which means I don't have the overhead of screen recording which is a lot better. Now as I mentioned this actually performs pretty well and um, I get generally 60 frames a second um, even if I change the uh, settings all the way up to Ultra which I've got here uh, this will run pretty well and Ultra just means that the shadow distances work a lot better. I'm trying to fly it looking at my main screen. I'm going to look at my phone, that's better. Um, yeah, you'll notice there we get a, a fairly consistent frame rate, about 60 frames a second. We can go through the trees and we can see all the shadows. That's good. We can go again and we can change the level to the city level. And I would still expect to be hitting mostly 60 frames a second, even on Ultra. Um, even on this four-year-old uh, iPhone XR, iPhones do uh, seem to have pretty good uh, graphical processors, especially if you look at the latest and greatest uh, iPads and stuff, and they, they blow this out of the water. You see we're getting a lot more stuff here and it's dropping down to sort of in the 30s. But fortunately, it presents it in a completely different way, but I can do the same thing on the iPhone. I mean, I can drop to medium first off, I can just knock that resolution down a couple and you will see there we've gone some sort of 40 something uh, back up towards the 60 depending on the amount of geometry and graphical gubbins we're doing there and I, I kind of needed that again to go on to the valley level where it's got an awful lot of stuff happening we can get a pretty consistent 60 frames frame rate by knocking down the resolution a couple of notches and getting the graphical stuff onto medium and it works pretty well. Now lots of people keep asking me about connecting joysticks on iPhones and, and what can you do. You'll notice I'm, I'm just messing around playing with the touch controls which I know are definitely not the best um, and if you're going to use them you need to change your rates to something different than what you would use on your radio because it's it's very different to fly with. There's a problem connecting radios on an iPhone or any iOS device. Apple insists that any device that connects to an, an iOS device like an iPhone or um, an iPad has this thing called MFI certification. This is a hardware spec in some way that says you're allowed to connect, be it uh, physically via a wire or by Bluetooth and if you don't have that you won't be able to connect to it and so far no hobby radios or any adapters that I know of can do this so yeah you can you can pair something in Bluetooth but it's not going to then come up as a joystick the only stuff I know about which does meet the MFI certification is stuff like Xbox controllers PS4 PS5 controllers which are nowhere near a radio they're better than using your thumbs um, but they're not good. If anybody knows anything else about that or they found something that does connect to it, I'd love to know because there's there's no way around it that I can find unfortunately. If I've got a few minutes to myself and I'm waiting around I will go ahead and I will just use my thumbs to fly around because it's better than anything else. Obviously Android you can pretty much connect anything to anything. You can use your um, OTG cable and connect any radio. You can use Bluetooth to connect most controllers. The caveat in that one is so far the Bluetooth in Express LRS which does not seem to work on Android uh, at all that i found so far. I have opened uh, an issue with Express LRS to see if something that we can do to fix that and they're looking at that and if anything comes out from that I'll let you guys know. Now the other thing I found when I was developing this um, especially on my iPhone because as I said this iPhone is iPhone XR it's four years old now and it's got three gigs of memory and when I started on the valley level it wasn't working I'd get it on the phone I'd start it up I'd change level and it would just exit um, and what I found by going in via the debugger is it was the iOS was issuing all sorts of memory warnings uh, and, and basically uh, it was shutting the process down saying you're taking too much memory which is interesting because there's three gigs available on this particular phone and it's kind of when it gets over 
when over half the memory is full, it starts issuing warnings to the process that's taken up the memory. And good old Unity, the game engine, gets these warnings and it doesn't tell me anything about them, so I didn't know they were happening. Uh, so then iOS kills you because you've taken up too much memory, essentially. I was taking up about, I think, 1.7 gigs of memory running the valley level on my phone. Um, and that was too much for it. So what I then did, I, I went through uh, Memory Profiler and I tried to work out what was using the memory. And the thing that seemed easy to get rid of were some of the high resolution textures. So some of the textures I was using were sort of 4K textures, which means you go really close into them. And on the desktop, that would be fine. On a phone with a smaller screen, it didn't seem as applicable. So I resampled a lot of these textures um, and I saved enough space to save about 400 megabytes in RAM and that allowed um, it to run on the iPhone XR. Everything after an XR, so in the last four years, seems to get at least four gigs of memory and on Android, uh, decent phones in the last X years seem to have even more, sort of six to eight gig of memory. But if you've still got an Android phone with two gigs, then only the original level will work. Uh, the city will probably dump you out and the valley level certainly will. So at least three gig is required to play all the levels. At least uh, I know that now going into it. I can, I can see the memory, I can see how it's used. So I can at least say that. One of the things I'd like to do, time permitting in the future, is create essentially a demo uh, which will act as a benchmark and just um, do some sort of pre calculated fly through the levels uh, to see the sort of performance you could get on your phone by changing the various things um, and to make sure it ran okay so I could just like give that away and then people would be able to test it before they decided they want to get it or not but hopefully that's come up in the future in terms of the the next thing I'm doing with the sim as I mentioned the desktop I'd like to put in some sort of race course albeit more of a like an exploratory fly around the entire island going through some sort of gate system and timing that. So that will be next, hopefully. But these should now be on the Play Store if you're an Android user or the um, the App Store for iOS users. Hopefully, I say, I say this because they've been uploaded, they've been approved, they're ready to go. I click go and then it takes from no time to about a week to release. I don't know why it takes this long because they just do it how they want to but it should hopefully be out by the time you're watching this video so please go ahead uh, play it. Obviously if you've already got it it's a free update and we'll just upload for you and you can uh, test it out. If you were getting marginal performance beforehand go in check that resolution thing have a go knocking the resolution down a bit see if you get better performance use that frame rate counter let me know how it goes. Any problems of course there's an email address and you can uh, mail me to tell me what the problem is and I will try and fix it. That's what I do. But happy simming and I will catch you in the next video. See you next time. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.